Hello my friends and strangers, my name is Nina, I am 25 years old, I have never been in a relationship, and so to fill the void and do something about my boredom, I decided to make a romance webtoon. Here's how. I am back with a whole Q&A. Ah! But specifically, I am finally going to talk about my webtoon. But basically for the last year and a few months, I have been working on my webtoon and it is called To Love and Be Loved. It is a romance drama genre webtoon. I created it all by myself. This is an episode. This is the latest episode. That's the title. And then we're just gonna scroll and you have all these panels. Got all these fictional characters and I write and draw the story myself. Came up with the characters myself. It is basic- Oh, turning back up the light. It is basic basically my baby and I'm finally going to talk more about this baby of mine but I asked you guys on Instagram for your questions about my webtoon you can follow my Instagram here I am literally on Instagram almost every day and I'm going to answer the most frequently asked questions that I get about my webtoon about the process characters so let's just get right into it so the first question I get a lot is why did I make a webtoon I might be more well known for making YouTube videos or being a YouTube content creator youtuber but I don't think that can stop me from doing other things I made a webtoon because it combines pretty much everything that I love about creating and about media. I actually did talk a bit about this in another video right here. This is my first webtoon related video basically where I announce my project and I go into depth about the process and about why I started it but essentially I started it because I just wanted to get back into drawing. I have always loved storytelling and coming up with scenarios and coming up with fictional characters who are very cool and people I would like to be friends with myself and so I made all that come true with this webtoon. I have always just been a fan myself of fictional media. I've always wanted to make a story myself, whether it was going to be a TV show or a movie. But in college, when I went to UC Berkeley, I was a media studies major. I just loved everything about media. Just fulfilling childhood dreams and making it a reality. Because why not? I have the power to. I'll get more into depth about that as the questions go, but that is basically why I made a webtoon. To just become a stronger creator. And just just to tune into the inner child. Another question that I get a lot is how do I write a webtoon? What's the process? Did things change over time? When it comes to writing, there's no real professional setup or process. I just write out the episodes as I go, kind of like a script or a screenplay. In media studies, I learned about storyboarding, writing as well, and so I had a little background with that too. Literally all I use is my notes app or some writing program, and then I have a writing tool like Grammarly to help me proofread, cut down long sentences, and just make everything sound concise, engaging, and also more professional, especially because a lot of people might read it. And that reminds me, thank you to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. But if you didn't know what Grammarly is, it is the go-to writing tool to help students improve their grades, become stronger writers, and also feel confident in every assignment they turn in. Grammarly sets you up for success by being your constant support in every stage of your student life, your professional life. It's literally your writing buddy. Grammarly has been an absolute lifesaver in my life. I use it all the time when I'm writing emails, when I'm scripting YouTube videos, and it's such a huge help with my webtoon as well. Grammarly has just helped me so much with my confidence in my writing and also managing my productivity. It literally helps me write my episodes and my videos faster and I can also breeze through emails while sounding professional and like someone that has everything together. And when you're more confident in your writing or whatever you're doing, it just makes getting things done easier and also more fun. It's also useful for writing papers, emails to your professors, so whether you use Grammarly for your professional life or for your student life, Grammarly is definitely a big help. So Grammarly has a free version that you can use. It offers grammar, spelling, punctuation suggestions, but if you upgrade to Grammarly Premium, which is what I use. It'll help you feel confident in any writing you're turning in with their advanced features. So with Grammarly Premium, you will have access to the Clarity Full Sentence Rewrites feature. This helps you effectively communicate your ideas by rewriting hard to read sentences so that your writing is more clear. And with Grammarly Premium, you also get vocabulary suggestions. This helps you replace your overused words with more exciting and effective ones to ensure you're not sounding repetitive in your assignments. Definitely my favorite feature. Grammarly is free to download and easy to integrate into your life. It works where you work, such as in Google Docs or emails. Succeed in school by improving your grades with the help of Grammarly. It's free free, so why not? You can go to grammarly.com slash nina to sign up for a free account, and if you would like access to those extra features, you can also use my link to upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you write your feature. Thank you again to Grammarly for sponsoring this video and for being such a good writing buddy. I've literally grown a lot as a writer because of them. 
And to continue on with how I write my webtoon, I also got asked a lot if I write the whole plot first or write it along the way, or if I find that the story changes as I go. In the beginning, when I was creating the story in late 2020, early 2021, I did think of a beginning, middle, and an end. Literally, I knew how the story was going to end. I think it's definitely important to have an idea, at least, of how your story is going to end so that you have an end to go to. Because at any time, if you need to change something or you don't know what to do next, at least you can come up with something that will lead towards that end. Now though, the story has changed a lot. And I think this was something that I didn't anticipate when I first got into this project. The thing about making a webtoon or a webcomic or just a comic in general is that it's going to go on for a very long time. I think it's different from releasing a book, like a book that ends in one volume. Maybe you have a sequel or something, but at least with a book, you have all these chapters in one and you release it after years of developing it, making it, you'll publish your book but specifically with a webtoon you're updating every week every two weeks maybe month and with webtoons you also get comments you get feedback basically every update you literally get to see what your readers think every time you update and this just naturally will lead to change sometimes readers like a certain character sometimes they don't like something about the story and then you realize oh maybe i can change that a little bit and then even you yourself after the weeks pass after months pass sometimes you get tired of a part of your story sometimes you realize it doesn't actually go with your story anymore or you just want to add things. I think a natural thing that any webtoon creator will experience is change to your story. Even if you think you have the most perfect story and nothing's going to change, you'd be surprised at how much things change. I have so many more characters. I scrapped some characters. I scrapped some plot ideas. I went on different paths, things like that. I do still have pretty much the same ending that I planned a year ago, but now I have like two or three different endings. <laughs> depending on how the story goes from now on. At least you can make the changes lead towards that end as well. Unless you change the ending, then that's a whole nother story. The ending that I have planned right now is pretty similar to the ending I had a year ago. And so the changes that I make, I try to make them fit towards that end. And it's just pretty satisfying. It also allows you to start foreshadowing. You can sprinkle little hints towards that end early on in the story so that as the story goes, readers can be like, oh, I remember that. Or, oh, Oh, the author foreshadowed that and it just makes you look smarter. But now I do basically write as I go. But something I am grateful for is the reactions that I get to every update. It helps me as a creator and also just makes the process feel like my readers are also part of the story. Even I basically don't know what's going to happen from now on. Even if I have an idea of the ending, I'm just figuring out how we're gonna get there now. It's a fun challenge. I feel like this whole project has been like an experiment for me. Next question is, was it hard writing out the storyline? Again, not really for me. I did want to mention that this is a romance drama, so it might have been a little bit challenging writing romance just because I haven't ex experienced it myself, but I have consumed a ton of media, especially a ton of romance media. And so I have experience through that. I don't think you need to necessarily be in a relationship to write a relationship. That's the power of the imagination. My webtoon revolves around two individuals that have spent a lot of time alone. They are kind of just used to being on their own. So I knew that I wanted to make a story about the vast range of introverts because we are not one stereotype. And I knew that's something that I want to touch on because I feel like like in media that I consume, I didn't really see a whole lot of introvert representation or at least introverts like me. So that's something that I wanted to explore with my webtoon was just the experience of an introvert dealing with the chaos of life and all sorts of people you meet along the way. And because I knew this was going to be a romance, I wanted these two individuals to get together, develop a friendship, relationship, and just navigate their life together. And then I also threw them into the entertainment industry <laughs> because that industry is pretty tough. And I have a little knowledge about about that as well. So again, if you have an idea of the plot and the adventure or the journey that the characters will go through, writing shouldn't be too difficult. If you ever heard of the hero's journey, that's a good place to start. Everything needs a beginning, the call to whatever journey they're about to embark on, etc, 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 climax, things happen, resolution, solving things, and eventually we get to an end. Just 
Next question that I got a lot is, is this webtoon based on your life experiences and what you've gone through? There's definitely inspiration from things that I've experienced, things that I've heard from friends, people in life, other media. But for the most part, I did want this to be a fictional story. None of these characters are based off of people in my life. But naturally, as a writer, you might throw in things that you know, things that you've experienced yourself because we're interesting people. We all have stories to offer. Next question is, how has creating a webtoon changed your life? One one of the most valuable things that I got from working on this webtoon is just being able to learn about things beyond my horizon. But at the same time, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself as well. I've learned much more about the psychology of a human. I feel like I've also been able to grow a lot as a person, kind of become stronger, definitely become stronger. <laughs> Something that I also experienced a lot with making this webtoon is a lot more challenges because this is a whole new thing for me to go through. I didn't think that I would ever publish my own piece of media, publish my own story, but now I have one and so I've been able to get back into drawing and definitely grow so much more as an artist and that came with its own challenges as well. I had to figure out my art style. I had to literally figure out how to digitally make art. I always was more of a traditional art kind of person and even with traditional art, I didn't really explore too much with it. I only ever did realism. I only ever stuck to what I was comfortable with. Through my webtoon, I've been able to challenge myself as an artist, critique myself, figure out what more I can do, figure out what I need to learn. I feel like this process has humbled me a lot. That's also another question I get a lot is about the digital art process and how I found my art style. I started digital art just two years ago and that was around the time that I got into working on my webtoon and so everything was just new and I did not realize how difficult it was to develop an art style. I still haven't had enough time to explore my art style when it comes to just illustration in general. The only art I make right now is for my webtoon and so I'm producing 30 to 40 panels every two weeks or so but I definitely wouldn't have grown this much without this webtoon project in the first place. With this webtoon I'm able to have more time for art that I kind of ditched through school. I was focused on other things. I also just kind of lost confidence and will and motivation to grow as an artist even though art was this childhood love of mine but I feel like I've definitely been able to become stronger and more confident in my art ability and because I am doing this on the internet where people can look at my art and give their comments about it it's also helped me kind of develop a tougher shell I feel like something that I wasn't really strong with was critique especially when I was in art classes myself I would also experience those critiques we had in class and my art teacher saying you should never draw hands again or this needs so much more work things like that and at the time you know I would take it personally or I would be like oh yeah maybe I should give up but I feel like now I just take every opportunity to just figure out okay what can I work on next how can I become stronger with this technique that so I feel like my webtoon has just changed my life in many aspects not just the art with the writing creating in general but also it's changed me a lot as a person myself I feel like I've become much more in tune with with myself, with what I care about, how I want to grow as a person, what exactly I want to grow. This webtoon has definitely been one of the most challenging things that I've taken on, but it's also been the most fulfilling and valuable. Definitely have no regrets about this. I'm thankful for everything that my webtoon has gone through. Sometimes I also think, oh, what if I started my webtoon later when I was a little stronger as an artist, when I was a little stronger as a writer, but just me being me, oh no Nina, or just Nina, I also find value you in being able to see someone's growth which is why YouTube's so precious to me is that I can see who I was a few years ago and who I am now and I wouldn't be able to see that if I didn't have my YouTube if I didn't have all these videos there for me as a sort of log to see how much I've grown sometimes you might think nothing really has changed life feels so static but with YouTube and all the videos I've produced whether I thought it was like a very pointless video or just a video that I wouldn't think about years later every single video of mine is pretty precious to me it shows me in different stages of my life and I feel like that's the same way with my webtoon. I literally get to see how my art has improved over the last year and a half. I get to see how my writing has improved. Some people might be afraid of seeing all that growth right in front of your face. Some people might find it a little embarrassing, a little cringy, but cringe is a part of life. That embarrassment is also part of life and that time was also an actual part of your life as well. That time where you were developing a skill, that time where you were exploring something, that was also you. 
even though you've definitely grown and have improved in whatever aspect of your life, there was still a time where you were a beginner, a novice, and it's still precious. Of course, there's gonna be people that are gonna be like, oh, your art sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, this writing sucks. Or, oh, I would have done this differently. Things like that. But everyone has their own opinion. I have my own opinions of that stuff too. But as a long-winded way to answer this question, creating Webtoon has changed my life in so many ways, not to be cheesy. I'm also thankful that people care about this Webtoon and have given it a chance. And I hope to just keep growing and working on this webtoon and just develop the story even more. I am in no means the best writer, the best artist, any of that. I'm just simply a person that likes to draw and imagine scenarios with fictional characters. That's it. You don't have to be a professional to enjoy something. Although being good at what you're doing makes the process more enjoyable, you also have to experience becoming better. And I'm experiencing that right now. And it's fun. Even when I made the first few episodes of my webtoon, I thought that was my peak. I thought, this is it. This art style right now, there's nothing else I need to change. Nothing else I need to learn. But my art style has changed a lot. And it's probably going to change even more. In a year from now, more changes. We'll see. Now on to some technical questions about my webtoon. How long does it take to create an episode? When it comes to writing, maybe like a day or two. Another thing about this webtoon, I am writing and thinking about this webtoon almost every minute of my life. So that's how I knew this was something that I cared a lot about. After I write the episode, I will go into storyboarding or laying out the panels, making the simple sketch of each panel. And that literally Really takes a day. There will usually be about 30 to 40 panels per episode. In the beginning, there were like 90. Never doing that again. It'll take me about a week and a half to do all of the liner, the flat colors, and then the rendering, finding backgrounds, all that. In total, I guess about ideally two weeks. And now we're going to get more specific into the actual characters of my webtoon. One question is, how do you get inspiration for the clothing? Because they look amazing. Thank you. Honestly, the outfits that the characters have had so far are pretty simple because drawing clothes takes up so much time. All the textures, wrinkles, lines, and stuff. Stuff. Oh my god, it's so much work. So I want to make cooler outfits in the future, but thank you for appreciating them as they are now. The inspiration for my clothing is actually Pinterest. I have Pinterest boards for all of my characters, even characters you have not seen yet. And that's kind of how I stick to certain aesthetics that the characters might have. Maybe one day I'll make those boards public, but for now, I keep everything private so that there's no spoilers for future outfits. Next question is your favorite thing about each character. I'll first do my favorite thing about Chian. She is my main girly. And my favorite thing about her is her problem-solving ability. If I were to define Chien, she would be a problem solver. She is someone that is always trying to figure out the solution to something. Or sometimes she might make a sudden decision. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. She will make some sort of decision. At least a little faster than I would. Which has been fun to write. And then moving on to Chanyang, my main guy. My favorite thing about him is his ability to challenge himself. He grew up with with certain stereotypes about himself and certain challenges that he faced and for a lot of his childhood he let it affect his life he became afraid of a lot of things for a period of time and that's just something people go through you can't always be brave always get over things quickly i can kind of relate to him but even with what he went through in the past he still decides to challenge himself and take opportunities that will challenge himself because in the back of his head he knows it's going to make him a stronger person it'll give him experience he other otherwise wouldn't have had. And that's also just fun to see. Sometimes I myself might just stay in my comfort zone. I might not take on a challenge. And so I do like that Chanyoung has enough bravery to do it. So my own characters inspire me. And also this obviously makes more sense if you read the web too. Go ahead, read the web too. There's a link to it as well. And now I'll go into my trio. My trio consists of Sayan, Heji, and Johan. And with Sayan, my favorite thing about her is her confidence. I wanted a confident character character that has good leadership skills, that is social, that is outgoing, always challenging herself. She's just a great escape for me. Also, another thing that I love about Sayan is just her love and admiration and respect for others. She is a pretty friendly person and she finds mostly the good qualities in other people, whether that's in a good way or a bad way, but I do like how kind and supportive her character is. She doesn't really have the time to judge, basically. She has other things to care about. My favorite thing about Heji, also just her general love and loyalty to her friends and also again to her character she's very supportive i honestly love hedgy i think she's one of my favorite characters to write which is also another question i get a lot is who's my favorite character to write honestly she might be my favorite because i love her so much 
and I hope you guys can love her too. She hasn't been in the story too much yet, but a lot is to come. She's a very understanding, supportive, loyal person and friend, but at the same time, she speaks her mind. She will not hesitate to protect her friends. She will not hesitate to protect the people around her. She will not hesitate to say what's on her mind either. And then my favorite thing about Johan, how realistic he is, or how self-aware he is, or aware he is of things. Again, in life, it's good to have optimism and hope, positive things, this and that. But I feel like with Johan, he's also aware of those things, but also aware of the not so great parts of society, the not so great things about life and just how not everything goes your way. Sometimes life can be a little hard and challenging, a little cruel. But something that I like about Johan is he's a pretty realistic person, which sometimes offers one-liners. He provides comic relief sometimes, but at the same time, he perseveres. He treats negative experiences and bumps in the road as learning experiences as well. He knows that he can gain something from these experiences. Next question is, who is your personal favorite character in Tullable? My personal favorite character? I would say my main five, but if I had to choose, probably Hedgy would be my consistent favorite character. And then obviously like Jian or Chanyang or Sayan or Johan, but it's hard to choose. And this also leads to my next question, which was who was the most difficult character to create? Because while I love Jian, she was the most difficult character to create. I feel like with making the webtoon in the beginning, I tried to avoid making a character that was similar to me because obviously as a pretty public person, since I am on the internet, since I am on YouTube, people know quite a lot about me, but I wanted this to be a story about a character that isn't too much like me. Sometimes people might think I'm the main character, <laughs> but I did want Jian to be her own person that goes through her own experiences that other people can relate to. So at the same time, I feel like Jian has also become this person that sometimes I don't know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> Jian reacts to situations pretty differently than I do. She navigates through her life in a different way than I would as well. And while that's been fun to explore, sometimes it can be hard to figure out because I don't truly know how someone like Jian would respond to a certain situation or what she would do, but it's been a great challenge. At the same time, I am able to relate to her as well. It's been fun, but she has been difficult sometimes. <sighs> but I still love her. I love her very dearly. Another question I got is which character's birthday is your favorite? I do have birthdays for almost all of my characters, even characters that you haven't seen yet. My favorite birthday would probably be Johan's birthday because his birthday is March 30, which is my dog Polo's birthday. Polo was my first dog and she is unfortunately not with me anymore. She was a very precious part of my life and I wanted to honor her in some way. And so when I wanted a character who was an Aries, who is Johan, I gave him Polo's birthday. And then after that would probably be Jian, who is born on December 22nd. And that is the same birthday as one of my all-time favorite anime characters, Kageyama Tobio from Haikyuu. I on purpose wanted them to have the same birthday for some reason because at the time, Kageyama was literally probably like my top favorite character. And so I wanted to honor him in some kind of way. I just thought it'd be cute if Chiyun had the same birthday because I did want her to be a Capricorn. Kageyama is also a Capricorn. So December 22nd, they have the same birthday. That was on purpose. I also like Chanyang's birthday. I personally have a lot of people in my life whose zodiac is Cancer. So I wanted Chanyang to be a Cancer. I gave him the birthday July 1st. Another question is what's the MBTI of the main leads? I am going to share the MBTI of all five characters because I love them. Chiyun is an INTP. Chanyang is an INFJ. Johan is an ISFP. Heji is an ISTJ. Zion is an ENTJ. Next question is give a song for each character. I do actually I actually have a playlist dedicated to my webtoon. It can kind of give a vibe of what the webtoon's about. It is called To Love and Be Loved. It's on my Spotify. I'll have a link to my Spotify down below. You can check out the playlist for yourself, maybe even listen to it as you're reading the webtoon. I kind of have to update it because there's a lot more songs I want to add onto it. If I gave a song for each character, Jian would definitely be My C by IU. Chanyang would be, I would say maybe Spring Day by BTS or Zero O'Clock by BTS. I would say that Johan is People by August D or Yoongi. Sayan, I feel like right now maybe Fearless by La Seraphim. I'm kind of just doing songs that I am listening to these days. Ooh, Anti-Fragile would also be good for her as well. And then for Heji, I would say that her song would either be Hurt by New Jeans or Run To You by Stacey. 
Next question is, what are the other genres that you would like to explore for a new webtoon? In an ideal world, if I had enough time to work on another webtoon, I would love to explore fantasy, specifically dark fantasy. And I actually have a dark fantasy idea that I've been developing for a long time now, but unfortunately I don't have time, but never say never. And the final question that I think we can end on is, do you think you'll ever be able to work on another webtoon after To Love and Be Loved is finished? I am hopeful and I would love to have another work. I don't think it's impossible. Maybe a dark fantasy webtoon is on the way one day. But for now, I just want to work more on To Love and Be Loved and just get through more of the story and just have a fun time. But I think this is a great place to end this Q&A. Maybe we can do another Q&A in the future. But I did want to say thank you so much for enjoying the webtoon so far. I feel like it's still not at the place that I want it to be. There's still so much that I want to share. There's still a lot that I need to grow and develop but I am so thankful that you've been enjoying To Love and Be Loved as it is and being patient as well. I am eternally grateful that I get to work on this webtoon and that it can be part of someone's life as well. So thank you so much for supporting To Love and Be Loved. I will work harder to bring out more episodes to you and create a story that you can be proud of and just be able to enjoy. Also, I did want to say one last thank you to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Again, if you would like to check them out, I do have a link that you can use. You can use grammarly.com slash Nina to sign up for a free account. And if you would like those extra features, you can also use my a link to upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you write your future. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully getting to the end and I will see you in my next video. We're going to bring it in for a hug as always. Thank you for being here. Thank you for reading my webtoon and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye my friends.